تعالى وبركاته دستور يا سيدي يا سلطان الأنبياء دستور يا سيدي يا سلطان الأولياء مدد يا رجال الله إن شاء الله we continue from where, where we left off yesterday we are reading from our grand sheikh our beloved sultan al-awliya al-sheikh muhammad nazim al-haqqani we are reading from his notebook from the notes that has been taken and inshallah we are asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the right path through his words his words are the words of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam our belief is that grand sheikhs and all awliyaullah, they take from the ocean of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they give to us his ummah, his nation. They give to us from what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is granting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our heart very vast, very expanse, very big to take, to absorb from the light and wisdom of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. What's better than that? To fill our heart with the wisdom of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the light of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is our intention. But that won't happen as long as we are in the path we talked about yesterday. Grand Sheikh, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, may Allah bless his soul and raise him higher and higher has told us that as long as we are in the station of nafs, in the station of the ego, and in the station of bad characteristics, we will be taking the path of thumma amanu, thumma kafaru. They are believers, then unbelievers. Then believers, then unbelievers. That means we are not on the straight path. And this holy uh, verse is in Surah An-Nisa, verse one, number 137, 137. So Grand Sheikh is saying, and we explained yesterday that we are like a bird trying to fly, but there is something tied to our leg by someone. And that someone is our bad ego, our lower self. Our lower self likes to drag us away from the divine presence. Our lower self always tries to pull us down to worldly pleasures, to the pleasures of this earth. And our lower self, our ego says, take this one, leave the other side. And that's what Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Holy Quran. And we have recited it during our Farz prayer. Asta'idu billah. Yuhibbuna al they like the fast one, the easy one, the close one, which is this dunya. So they like instant pleasures. And they leave behind them a heavy, very heavy day. So the ego pulls us down with the rope of bad characteristics. Says, no, you come to me and satisfy me. Leave your Lord. Leave your messenger, leave awliyaullah, stay with me. This is the wisdom of tariqah. This is the wisdom of shiyukh. The wisdom of shiyukh and their knowledge is to teach us what goes on in the inner world. The outer world is full of people that has bad characteristics. But also the, our inner world is full of creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his infinite wisdom has created inside of us. And that's what Tariqah teaches to clean. That's what Tariqah is teaching to notice your inner world and try to rid yourselves, rid yourself from what is going on in the inner world. So Grand Sheikh is saying that as long as we are in the station of the ego and the bad characteristics, we are like a bird with a rope tied around its leg. Whenever the bird wants to fly, that one that's holding the bird lets them go. The bird flies and then pulls them down. And yesterday we talked about one of the bad characteristics that everybody has. It is hubbur riyasa, the love of leadership. The love to be a leader. Always a human being 
has that love, which is a bad characteristic. To be a leader, a leader over whoever he can. And there are other bad characteristics, and Grand Sheikh is pointing to another one, which is stinginess. Stinginess is a bad characteristic. To be stingy is a bad characteristic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Holy Quran is ordering to spend from what you get, to spend from what you earn. He, is, he has made it an obligation to give zakat on what you earn. But when we want to give zakah, when we want to follow the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we want to be directing our face towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who catches us? When you want to spend, who catches you? Says, oh no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. How much are you giving? Oh, you have 100 coins of gold. Okay, you're going to give how many? You give 2.5%. So you're going to give two and a half coins, okay? One, one year after one year after one year after one. You lose all of them. What is this giving away? Who, do, who does that? It is the ego. It is the bad characteristics. It is the rope that is tied around our legs. So whenever we want to do good, whenever we want to be, to be on the right path, what, does, what happens? That ego pulls you back. Says, hold on a second. Don't give. In, uh, ima not imagine, but invent some way in order not to give. That is now the, the shatara, the, the cleverness of Muslims nowadays. They have extra money. Zakat, they have to give zakat. So what does their, their ego teach them? Invest it. Put it here, put it there, take it out and move it. Don't make it in a pot so you have to give zakat. No. Distribute it. That is the bad characteristic of the ego. That we are directing ourselves to follow the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ego says, no, no, hold on a second. Don't give. That money is mine. Come down to myself. That is, one, that is another characteristic. Another characteristic is envy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes the ones that are content with what they have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you this much, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you this much, alhamdulillah. But the ego what? Says no. Why we say alhamdulillah? I am jealous of that one. I want what he has. I want what she has. These are all examples of bad characteristics that we all have to work on. And this is, this is the rope that is tied, tied around our leg. So how do our grand sheikhs save us or rescue us? He says, they say, pray two rak'ats. And we're going to call the, this prayer Salatul Najat. The Salah of being rescued. What do we recite in Sajda of Salatul Najat? People ask, why do you pray Salatul Najat? This is a wisdom that Mawlan Sheikh Nazim is giving. We, are, we have a rope tied to our leg. We are a seer. We are captive. We are captive in the hands of our ego. So we want to be released. We want to be saved. We want to be rescued. Why? Because we want to continue our path to the divine presence. We don't want to be pulled back, back, back all the time to this earth. So we need salvation. We need a najat. So grand sheikhs have uh, ordered the prayer of these two rak'ats. Before Fajr, these two rak'ats, what do we recite in the sajda? If people don't know what we recite in sajda, get the awrad book and read the English translation of the dua. Allahumma kama ta'kulu narul hatab. That's what we recite in Salatul Najat. And if people don't know, please go and buy or access Mawlan Sheikh Hisham's book that he compiled, the small awrad book or the guidebook. It, it says there, it describes Salatul Naja, and it describes the dua we have to do in the sajda. Read it. If we don't know the Arabic version, say the English version, it doesn't matter. But say what is there. Allahumma kama ta'kulu narul hatab. Oh my Lord, as the fire eats the wood. 
اللهم كما تأكل النار الحطب كذلك الحسد المتأصل فيه يأكل جميع حسناتي As the fire eats the wood Also the hasad, the jealousy and the envy that is inside of me Is eating all of my good actions All of my good deeds كذلك الحسد المتأصل فيه يأكل جميع حسناتي فخلصني منه Rescue me from that From jealousy ومن الأخلاق الذميمة and rescue me from the bad characteristics ومن طفل النفس المذمومة and rescue me from the hand of the ego that is the dua we make so Grand Sheikh is saying you are all tied in the hand of the ego by the ropes of the bad characteristics and we are saying how we gonna what do we do you don't have to do anything except pray these two rakats and people now miss it Grand Sheikhs have have given away on how to be rescued from the ego because when you're rescued from the ego you will be flying towards the divine presence and they made it into two rakats and they made it into a small prayer at sajda that takes one minute and people feel lazy and tired to do these two rakats so the point we take home is that pray salatul najat if you want to be rescued from the hands of that ego, if you want to be rescued from the ropes of bad characteristics, of envy, of jealousy, of greed, of stinginess, of, of anger, of stubbornness, and, uh, and the love to be a leader, pray these two rakats and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rescue you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the rescuer. And Mawlana Sheikh Nazim has taught us to make this dua, and inshallah all of us will do it. يا منجي الهلك نجنا مما نخاف All the ones that rescues the, the ones that are perishing هلك The one that will perish The one that rescues The ones that are perishing Rescue us from what we are afraid of We are afraid of perishing We are afraid of not being admitted to the divine presence So Grand Sheikh is teaching us Make this dua Six words يا منجي الهلك Oh the rescuer of halka, of the perishing ones. Najina mimma nakhaf. Rescue us from what we are afraid of. They teach their words is one word or two words, but it contains an ocean. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescue us from that bad ego. Pray these two rakats. Yesterday, Grand Sheikh has given another uh, treatment for this bad ego or cure, which is Kalima to Shahada. We talked about it in yesterday's Suhba, but today Mawlana Sheikh is opening another door that also these two rakats before Fajr, Salatul Najat, and if you pray these two rakats and make the dua that is in the Awrad book that Mawlana Sheikh Hisham has compiled, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us that safety and we will be rescued from the bad ego so we can fly and we can be admitted in the divine presence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the ones that keep the prayers, that keep the awrad that grand sheikhs have showed us. Why are they showing us the awrad? For us to play, or to sing, or to chant, or to dance? No. This is for the ego, because the ego loves to dance, loves to chant, to, to chant, love to eat, love to pray. Why? Because it's fun. But they, they, there's like the chocolate, they give you a chocolate, but Inside, they also give you a medicine. When I used to be working at the nursing homes, what do they do to the old people? They mix the medicine with applesauce. <laughs> the medicine is so bitter. Nobody wants to take medicine. What do they do? They coat it, sugar coat it. Sometimes when you take a pill and the, the sugar coat is, is gone, what happens? You feel the bitterness of the pill. So grand shakes, they give us something sweet. Dance. Hop. Do this, do that, fun. But inside is a medicine. Even if it's difficult to do, but it's a medicine on the inside. So Salatul Najat is difficult to do because nobody wants to wake up for, leave before Fajr. They don't want to wake up for Fajr itself. How are we going to wake up before Fajr? Half an hour before Fajr or maybe an hour. So, but that difficult medicine is the cure for that bad ego and the rope it has tied around ourselves. This ego has tied the rope on Muslims, has tied the ropes on Imam, has tied its ropes on uh, Christians, has tied its ropes on 
Buddhist monks, on Jewish rabbis, on Christian priests, on Muslim imams, on Muslim doctors of Sharia, that ego has tied all these ropes around them. Which imam doesn't get angry? Which, let's say, a human being, we'll make it general. Which human being doesn't get angry, religious or non-religious? Which human being does not get jealous? Which human being does not get envious? Whether they are imam or priest or a monk or a rabbi or none of that. A regular common one. So that ego has tied its rope on all. And the cure from that is shahada and two, two rak'at salatul najat. So when a non-Muslim accepts shahada and becomes a Muslim, he has taken the first step. When they end, that's sharia. When they enter into tariqah, they have taken the second step. They have got the two wings. Without the wings, nobody can fly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created birds with wings. Why? He, he could have created something that has no wings that can fly. But it's, it's a sign. It's an it's a ayah. People don't see that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the wings to tell you that if you want to leave this earth and fly into heavens, you have to have wings. So the planes have wings. But rockets don't have wings, but that's the, something different. Let's take the birds. You need wings to fly to, the, to heavens. So what are your wings? First wing is shahada, sharia. Second wing is tariqah. That is salatul najat. So if we take shahada, and if we do salatul najat, every day we are secure from that ego, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will release us from its grip, and we can fly into heavens. First one, second one, third one, fourth one, until he knows, we don't know. Until we reach our station, we have a station in heavens. Grand Sheikh said, as, as you have a home on earth, you have a home in heavens. Your home is in Australia, your station is, let's say, fifth heaven. Your home is Bangladesh, your station may be seventh heaven. You have a home on earth, you have a home on he in heavens. Grand Sheikh Mawlana Sheikh Nazim has said that in his, one of his sohbas. But to enter the home in, on earth, what do you need? Keys. You cannot just break the door and enter your house. You're, you're stupid to do that. You to use the keys, open the door. So for the home in heavens, you need the keys. So you need the wings. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala release us from the grip of that ego. Continue with Salatul Najat. Uh, learn that dua in Arabic if you can. If you can't, in English, it doesn't matter. As long as you get the, the meaning of that dua in your heart and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to release us from that, from the bad ego, from the bad characteristics, from envy, from all of that ropes that we have tied around us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us on the right way, way of Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, way of grand sheikhs, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our guides that are on top of us healthy and with long life. And may Allah bless Bless them and bless their families and bless their murids. Amin, amin, amin. Bi hurmat al-Habib wa bi hurmat al-Fatiha.